Hi everyone, it's Barbara and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my top 20 DIYs in 2020, so let's jump right on in. This snowman centerpiece using items from Dollar Tree. So this piece cost me less than $7 and I think it turned out so gorgeous. I'm going to start off with this glass vase from Dollar Tree and I've gone ahead and removed the sticker off the bottom and I'm also going to be using this plastic snow globe from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove the lid and the insert and the paperwork and set that to the side because I only need the outer portion of the snow globe. So to prep these for paint, I am using some rubbing alcohol and a cotton swab, and I'm gonna clean the inside of both of these pieces with the alcohol because I'm gonna be painting the inside. And I'm mostly doing this for the glass because you wanna make sure it's nice and clean before you begin your paint. So once the alcohol is dried, I am taking my Waverly chalk paint in white, and I'm giving it a thin coat of paint on the inside, and I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'll put a second coat of paint again on the inside. Now you could paint the outside of this if you'd like, but I chose to paint the inside because I thought that it would show less brush strokes, and I love the way it was nice and glossy on the outside and nice and smooth. So you're gonna paint the inside of the snow globe as well. Again, this is with two coats, allowing those to dry in between the coats, and they're very thin coats. So once these have dried, I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to the inside of mine. This is completely optional, but I wanted to make sure that the paint doesn't chip, especially on the glass vase, because once I put these together, you know, you wouldn't be able to fix the inside if that paint chipped off. So to secure these two together, I am using E6000 and hot glue, and the E6000 is going to create that permanent hold, and the hot glue is going to hold it in place just until that E6000 sets up. So I'm going to take the globe and flip it over so that the twisting portion is at the top, and then center that up, make sure it's nice and centered on the bottom part, so this will become his head. So now I am going to take some of these pearl sparkling gems. These came from Dollar General, and if you've watched any of my previous videos, you've seen me use these a couple of times. And I'm gonna paint two of those in my black chalkboard paint that came from Dollar General. Now this chalkboard sign came from Dollar Tree in a package, and I've already used the sign on a previous project. So I just clipped, because I keep everything, I kept the little wooden stake on the um, DIY I used before and I just clipped the end of that off and gave it a nice coat of paint in the Folk Art Pure Orange and this is going to become his nose. So now to cover up the rim at the top, I am going to use some buffalo check ribbon. This came from Hobby Lobby. Of course, you can use the buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree. I just had this on hand and it's a little bit thinner than uh, like not as wide as what you get from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut that down to length. And then I want to fold this over so that it is the same size as the twisting portion of the snow globe. And in this particular ribbon, it ends up being just the black and gray check part. So I'm gonna fold that down so it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to use hot glue to hold it in place so it becomes one uniform piece. And then once all of that is glued down, I can attach it around the rim of the snow globe using hot glue. And this is actually going to, going to become part of his hat. And you'll see in just a moment, I think it turns out really, really nice. So once I get all of that glued down, his hat, I'm actually going to be using a Dollar Tree ornament. And it is this Buffalo Check Hat Dollar Tree Ornament, and it is so beautiful. I love the greenery and the berries. And I'm going to cut the hanger off as close to the top of the hat as possible, and I kind of push that down, the little hanger part that's left over. And then I'm going to use hot glue to attach his hat to the top of his head. Now, as you can see, I've already applied one of his eyes. You guys, I'm sorry. He was rolling around all over the place, so I had to put a towel under him to keep him in place. But I'm just taking those sparkling gem pieces and attaching that with hot glue and then attaching his nose with hot glue as well. 
And then once all of that is set up, I'm going to create his scarf using the same buffalo check ribbon. And I'm just going to apply hot glue where the two pieces meet. And then I'm going to put the ribbon on top of that and push it down and then fold it over just a little bit. And you'll see in just a minute, this gives it a little bit more of a realistic scarf look. And once I get that on there, just fold it down a little bit. You don't want it completely folded, but just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Go around with hot glue. And when I get to the front, I'm going to take one side, loop it under the other side. And once that comes through, pull that up and then I'm going to loop it through the other side again. Boy, I hope that makes sense. That's a little confusing, but basically just almost like tying it. And then I'll fluff that out a little bit. I'm going to push it off to the side. And once I get that exactly the way I want it, I'm going to take hot glue and glue that piece right there to where the two pieces meet push that in and then I will cut the end of the scarf off to the length I want and push uh, push those little pieces off to the side. So to create his mouth, I am using an oil-based Sharpie marker and I wanted him to have a cute little quirky <clears throat> curvy mouth. You can create your mouth however you want. I just thought it gave him a nice cute touch. So the snowman portion is finished. To create his base, I am using this eight inch wire wreath form from Dollar Tree. They come two in a pack. And I'm using the 15 foot garland from Dollar Tree. And I will use this entire 15 foot. So I'm just going to take the end and feed it through the center to begin with and wrap it around so that it will hold it in place. And then I'm going to take the entire 15 feet and just wrap it all the way around the outside, just kind of pushing it up, making sure it's nice and tight so that it will be a nice full wreath form when it's finished. So when I get to the end, I'm just going to wrap that end piece around and tuck it in under the bottom and then fluff it out, make sure everything's nice and tight um, and full. So to decorate it a little more, I am using some boxwood bundle from Walmart and you can pick these up about 98 cent a bundle and I'm just going to pull the pieces off of the bundle until I get however many I think I might want to use and then I'm going to put hot glue in there and just add these into the wreath form and I'm just adding them sporadically making sure some of them hang off the sides, making sure some of them come up a little bit just to give it more of a natural look. And once I get all those boxwoods on, I'm also going to decorate it with some pine cones that I purchased from Dollar General and they come 12 in a pack for a dollar and they have hangers on them. So I'm going to take those hangers off and you can just pull those straight off. And then I'm going to glue the pine cones down wherever I think they look nice, which kind of ends up going in between those boxwoods and around those. And then once I get my pine cones in place, I am going to take this outside and I am going to spray it with this Santa snow, which I found at Dollar General for $1.75. And it honestly does not take much at all. This can should last so long because it doesn't take much to create that snowy effect. This is how it looks once it's dried. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And to give it some color, I'm going to add these berries from this berry pick from Dollar Tree. And I just pulled the berries off and cut them down because they're larger than I really want. And if, when you pull them apart, you know, some of the pieces don't have paint on it, but you can take those pieces and kind of push it down into the wreath form so that you don't see those. And of course you could put the berries on before you put the snow, but I really wanted that pop of red because I thought it looked really, really good. And once I get these berries on, the wreath form part of it, the base for the snowman is finished. And then you can set your snowman right in the center. And I absolutely think this turned out so gorgeous. If you're new to my channel and you are enjoying today's DIYs, I would love it if you would click that subscribe button and the bell icon below this video. And I would also love for you to follow me on Instagram at Country Lily Decor. I cleaned the mason jars with rubbing alcohol and then I spray painted them with a white spray paint with two light coats. And then I began cutting the wood for my wooden tray that I wanted to set them in. 
You can use whichever um, sizes that you need, but I used two 14 and a half inch long, two three and a half inch long, and then my bottom piece, I wanted it to be recessed inside of the tray. So I had to take into account the width of the short side pieces. So that bottom piece was a 13 and a quarter inch by three and a half inch. I used the um, miter saw to cut my smaller, thinner pieces, and then I used the table saw to cut the piece off the bottom. This was all scrap wood that I already had at home. And then I took my pieces and began to assemble the tray by pre-drilling my holes. And then I put screws in each end from the long pieces going into the short pieces. And then I pre-drilled my holes at the bottom portion of each long side. And then I tapped in some finish nails. tray to have a very smooth look so I filled in the holes from the screws and the nails with some wood filler. Once that dried I sanded it to a smooth finish and then I made a I wanted to have a gray wash so I used some gray acrylic paint and I mixed that with water and then I painted that over all the wood sides and in the bottom of the tray to give it that nice um, weathered gray wash look. I then stenciled some letters with some Waverly chalk paint. Um, I stenciled Sweet Home on each side of the tray because I wanted it to be visible from both sides. I'm going to sit this on my kitchen table and I want you to be able to see it no matter where you're standing. I want it to be able to look the same. I cut six little hearts out with the burlap ribbon and then I painted two of those white and added that to the tray on each side just to give it a cute little country feel. I took some burlap ribbon that I already had on hand that I had previously purchased at Dollar Tree. I wrapped it around my mason jar twice because I didn't want to be able to see through the ribbon. And then I marked that with painter's tape where I wanted the letters to be. And I took the next strip and just lined it up each time as I stenciled my letters on there. So that when you wrapped it around the mason jar, you would be able to read home on each side, no matter where you were standing. I attached the ribbon to the mason jar using hot glue, making sure that the letters lined up in the center on each side. I then 
took some jute string and attached that to the top of the jar with hot glue just to give it a completed finished look. I then placed some artificial flowers that I had purchased from Dollar Tree into each mason jar and I just absolutely love how this turned out as a centerpiece for my table. I love the fact that it reads and looks the same from either side. So if you're standing in my living room or if you're standing in my kitchen, it looks the same. You can read Home Sweet Home on there. For this project, I used two packages of wood planks that come six in a pack two canvas frames, and some foam board, all purchased at the Dollar Tree. I used three different colors of acrylic paint, painter's tape, hot glue. I used E6000 instead of the Gorilla Glue. And I also used a pair of pliers and a screwdriver to get the staples out of the frame. I take the frames apart and pull the staples out with the screwdriver and the pliers and then I break apart the wood. I ended up not using these two frames because the ends butted up together and I liked the mitered look. And I happen to have two other frames purchased at Dollar Tree that did have the miter cut, so I ended up using those instead. After I am finished taking them apart, I do sand them down, getting ready to paint them. I take the wood planks and I use six from one package and three from another, lay them down on the foam board with the wood grain facing all in the same direction, and then I take a box cutter and trim the two edges of the foam board so that it will match the wooden planks. I then take four of the nine planks and take painter's tape and run it from one corner to the other corner to make a triangle. And then I'm also going to run the painter's tape from the opposite corner down to the opposite corner to make a triangle in quarter sections of each board. Once they fully dried, I run the painter's tape from the opposite corner down making another triangle opposite of the previous triangle. And on the lighter grays, I paint the opposite color lighter gray again, and opposite of the dark gray, I paint white, and opposite of the white, I paint gray, the dark gray. And I put two coats of those and remove the tape before the paint dries. I take the five other planks and paint them all a dark gray, the steel gray. I put two coats and I also paint the edges of each one. And then I set those to the side, allowing them to fully dry. I take the painter's tape and run it from the opposite corner down creating a triangle opposite of the previously painted triangle. And I paint the lighter gray opposite the lighter gray and then white opposite the dark gray. I put two coats on and then remove the painter's tape while the paint is still wet and allow those to completely dry. And then I repeat this process until I have four pieces that have a dark gray opposite the white and two light grays opposite each other.
Aside from the two canvas frames, I had to use one piece of wood that came in a pack at um, Walmart that I've had for a while. It was the same width, and I mitered those edges down in order to be able to match them together to make the frame the proper size for the barn quilt. I took the pieces that I had mitered and I used E6000 and hot glue to put each side together. So I placed each section together to make each side of the frame. The E6000 is just more of a permanent bond and the hot glue to hold it in place until that bond sets up. And then I painted each one of the sides of the frame white with two coats of a semi-gloss white paint that I already had on hand. I then glued the planks to the foam board using E6000 and hot glue. I started by the, using the top edge because it was the straightest edge and I put the four dark gray planks in each corner, one dark gray in the middle, and then I put the designs in the other four places left on the board. I then attached each side of the frame using E6000 and hot glue and let that set up overnight. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I think it is so beautiful and I just love the colors. Today's video is part of a collaboration which is hosted by Heidi Sambel at Heidi Sambel DIY and her co-host Leonette at DIY Beauty on Purpose. I will have a link to the playlist as well as their channels in my description box below. So I hope that you will go over and check out everyone's videos. Using these two buckets that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, I'm going to begin by removing the handles and then I'm going to give it two coats of paint with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I used two dowels out of a package that I already had on hand and I'm painting them in the color Truffle which is a chalk paint made by Waverly and I don't need to paint the entire piece. I do leave the end not painted because I'm going to end up cutting these to fit. Once the chalk paint has completely dried, I'm going to take a medium gray acrylic paint and I'm going to use a dry brush and I'm just going to put enough paint onto the brush and then wipe most of it off on a napkin and I'm going to dry brush these around both of the buckets because I want these to look like stone planters. So I do that with both of the buckets and then I also use a lighter gray to go in between the darker grays using the same dry brush technique and then I will also use a white acrylic paint to blend in the grays just just to give it a finished stone look. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below how you think these turned out as far as looking like stone planters.
I picked up this floral foam square from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut it down to size so that it'll fit inside the buckets but it, you don't want it to be too full because it will push the sides of the little buckets out so I scored it with my scissors but I did find that the box cutter worked best so I just score it and break it until I get it to the proper size to fit down inside of the bucket. Then I'm going to take these dowels and I'm going to use two different size styrofoam balls that I picked up at Dollar Tree, one slightly larger than the other. I determined where I wanted the larger size styrofoam ball to be and I just pressed that down onto the dowel trying to keep it center of the styrofoam ball and then once that goes completely through I'm going to put the smaller of the styrofoam balls on top of the dowel but do not push it all the way through. You only want it to go about halfway because you, you don't want the dowel to come out of the top of the styrofoam ball. And I'm going to do that for both of the dowels. And then I'm going to look and see, a eyeball about how high I want them to stand up above the planter. And then I'm going to cut the excess of the dowels off. I did find that using some pruning shears worked better to cut these dowels evenly. Then I used some hot glue. Make sure you have it on the lowest setting because it will melt the styrofoam. But I put some hot glue on the bottom of the styrofoam and just gently placed it in the bucket and just held it there till it set up so that it would stay nice and straight and secure. I picked up this reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree as well. And I do end up using about two and a half packages. I had picked up three, but I only ended up having to use two and a half. And what you're going to do, the best thing to do that I found is to break it apart once you take it out. I do realize that after the first bag, but it still turned, it still turned out wonderful. Um, but it would be easier to work with if you break that up before you glue it on. And so I just put a, a little bit of hot glue and use it in small spaces at a time and then just take the reindeer moss and put that on there and just hold it until it sets. Now I suggest that you put a little bit of hot glue and some reindeer moss on the bottom of the top of the styrofoam ball first because that will hold that ball into place so that it doesn't twist around. And then you just repeat this process for all four of the styrofoam balls. After finishing putting the moss on one of the styrofoam balls, I just take my hands and just mold it to the styrofoam and then I take the scissors and trim the excess off like you're giving it a cute little haircut and I do that for each one of the styrofoam balls.
Put a little bit of hot glue on the styrofoam that's in the bottom of the bucket and took the leftover moss and just pressed it into the top of the styrofoam and then around the bucket just to give it a nice little polished look and then i'm going to take some hemp rope and hot glue that around just the top portion of the bucket because i didn't want the little holes to show so i just take the glue and go around the top rim put that rope down and then just periodically put some glue and then I made sure I put the hot glue on the last piece of the rope for each one and just eyeballed it to make sure they both look cohesive and about the same amount of rope on there. Love how these two DIYs turned out. They are so gorgeous. I think they look so high end. For this project, we're going to be using this cute little plastic, I'm going to call it a laundry basket, that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Hot glue gun, some hot glue sticks, a white cotton clothesline that I picked up at Walmart. I believe it was about $4.97 for a 100-foot roll. And this microfiber mop head that I picked up at Dollar Tree. So I'm going to begin by hot gluing the first strand around the bottom. And I do hot glue that entire strand because I don't want the rope to move up and down once I get the basket together. So after I glue that first strand all the way down, I just roll it out and glue as necessary just to make sure it stays in place. And I'm trying to actually keep the glue like maybe one on each side just so it doesn't slide up and down. And I'm gonna do that about a third of the way up the laundry basket. So once I get about a third of the way up, I am going to cut the end off, hot glue that down, and then take my mop head apart. You just actually slide it out of that little center piece, and then it has a little uh, piece tied together that you just cut off. And I'm going to repeat the same process with this, hot gluing that first strand down. I do take my time because I wanted to make sure all of the gray was on the bottom, 
and all the white was on the top. So this part of the project actually took the longest out of the entire project just because I wanted to make sure everything was symmetrical and that the, like I said, the gray was on the bottom and the white was on the top because I wanted to look like a beautiful little elegant stripe going down the middle. So we're gonna do this two thirds of the way up. And um, when you get to the end, well, like I, like I said on the other one, I just hot glued, you know, every once in a while where I thought it needed just so it wouldn't slide around. And we're gonna do that two thirds of the way up and then cut that end piece off, glue it down. And then I see a little piece on the bottom and I finally figured that out, that it was kind of coming loose. It was like I missed a piece of hot glue. And then I do fix that. Then I also uh, go around the top, again, using the hot glue all the way around at the beginning and then at the end and just coiling it around, making sure it's nice and tight. And I think it's really coming together really nicely. It's super cute. And you'll have to let me know, you know, would you have used gray and white or, you know, I think twine in the middle or some sizzle rope would be really pretty. Um, just depends on what type of decor you have. I love farmhouse. Um, and I just think this is an elegant piece. There I was fixing the bottom when I finally realized it come out. So all I had to do was pull it apart, put a little glue, push back down. Um, obviously, I just missed missed that glue on that strand when I was coming through and it got a little loose. So super easy fix. You could do that if you miss on any of these. But I'm just going to go all the way around and get to the top. And I do make sure I use my glue all the way around that top rim to make sure it gets a nice secure fit so they don't slide around. But like I said, I think this is coming out really elegantly. You'll have to let me know, you know, what colors you would have chosen. Once I get to the end, I am going to take the mop head, um, or we'll call it rope, because it's not a mop head anymore now, and hot glue a little strand, and then just feed that through, twirling it around the handle until I get all the way to the other side, and then I'm going to hot glue that piece down and just go back and kind of fluff that up just to make sure, you know, I like the way the handle is looking, make sure I have enough rope on there. I don't want too little and the little handle sticking out. And I'm gonna do that for both sides of the handles on this little laundry basket. And I think this turned out so cute. You'll have to let me know, you know, if you like this, are you gonna make one of these? You know, if you're gonna use these colors, but it's so cute, it's just absolutely adorable. And I'm also going to be using a wooden dowel. I actually got a package of these at Walmart, like an assorted pack. And I just pulled one of those out. And these really cute fat bluebirds. I picked up two of these. They're a dollar a piece at Dollar General. And I wanted two that looked different. I didn't want them to look exactly the same. So one's looking one way and the other one's looking straight. They are absolutely adorable just the way they are. But I popped the top piece off and I was pleasantly surprised that there was a heart-shaped piece of wood under there. However, it was glued down very well and it caused a little hole in the bottom of the sign, but no problem. I just put some wood filler in there, filled that in, and I'm going to let that set up completely and then I'll sand that down to a nice smooth finish. So while that's setting up and drying, I'm going to take the same chalky paint that I used in DIY number one, and I'm going to give these little birds a coat of paint. Now, my original thought process was I wanted to leave the little eyes, the beaks, and the feet black, and that's why I was being a little bit meticulous about how I was painting it. But then in mid-crafting, I decided I wanted to paint it all white because I wanted the whole project to be white and I thought it would just give it a very nice, elegant uh, feel to it, a real nice farmhouse feel. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you would have left the little eyes and the beaks and the feet black or if you like it all white. I think it turned out great, but I think it would have looked great either way. So these little birds, it took about three coats of paint to get these little birds covered, to cover all that blue up. So now that the wood filler has dried and I've sanded it to a smooth finish, I take the same chalk paint 
and I go over the outside edges, the top, and the inside edges, and the bottom of the sign, and give it about two coats of paint to make sure I have good coverage on there and that none of the little lines in the bottom are showing because I want to make sure it was solid white. And earlier I did take the hanger off of the back of that sign. I'll save that for another DIY. I'm not going to need that for this particular DIY. I also paint my dowel and here you see me using my hair dryer just trying to speed up the process a little bit so I can put those second and third coats on and uh, make sure it's nice, nicely covered and each like none of the blue is showing through and none of the um, lines and everything on the sign are showing through. So once that has completely dried, I'm going to take the dowel and this, my little rusty, you guys, I'm sorry, this thing's so old, my hand saw, and I'm not cutting that dowel in, in, in half, half, like exact half. One of the sides is smaller than the other. I wanted it to be shorter than the other. And I make sure I sand it down to a flat, smooth finish because I really need those to be flat for the next part of this process. I am going to be using my hot glue gun and glue the, I'm going to start off with the smaller, shorter dowel and glue that to the middle bottom of the bird. And I'm going to let that set for just a minute, let that hot glue set up. And then I'm going to take a bead of hot glue and go around the dowel and the bird just to give it a little extra stability. So originally I just wanted to glue these down in the tray and that would work but it was not as stable as I wanted it to be. I didn't want them to be like jiggling around when you move it. So I do pull out some wooden cubes that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. Super easy fix, and I actually like the way it turned out better with the cubes, and I'll show you why I say that in just a moment. So the second bird I'm doing the exact same way, putting that bead of glue around the bottom. So here, this is where I was saying I was just going to put the bird down, and it does set up, but it just kind of moved a little more than I wanted it to. So I just just take these little wooden block or little wooden cubes, and I'm going to glue it to the bottom of the, um, I'm not going to call it a sign anymore, I'm going to call it like a little tray, and then I'm going to glue it to the side of the dowel as well, so to the bottom of the tray and the side of the dowel, and one on each side, and it just gives it a lot more stability, and you'll be able to see that better on the um, second bird when I glue that down. And then I'm just going to come in after those set up a little bit, and I will paint these little cubes white just to blend them in better. And they're looking so cute. I didn't want them facing the same way. I wanted them to be facing a little differently because I think that just looks so adorable. And I just love the way this is turning out. So now I'm just gluing the bottom part of that to the uh, tray and the dowel and just giving it, I just put one coat because I'm actually going to be covering it up, but just in case you could see it, I didn't want you to see the wood. I wanted it to be all white. Then I'm going to take some of that same box wood that I used in DIY number one, and I'm just going to pop the little pieces off of the end, and then I'm going, of course, after all of this dries, I'm going to be gluing those to the cubes and to the dowel around each of the birds, and so that's why the cubes came in really handy. It actually worked out better in my favor that I used those because I could glue the greenery around and glue it to those little cubes and just I actually at no rhyme or reason I, as to where I put them I just put them where I thought they looked good and filled it in around each of the birds and I love how this green is popping out on this white it is so pretty um the pictures really don't even give it justice it really is really gorgeous i love the way this this one turned out as well so um, i'll show you in just a minute the finished product but i hope you'll let me know in the comments down below how you like diy number one and number two and which one is your favorite so i'm just filling this in making sure i have enough greenery all the way around it to my liking because I didn't want like some bare spaces, but I also didn't want it in those corners either. I just wanted it around the birds. But you know, it probably would be pretty if you filled it in or you could put flowers in there. You could put any kind of floral you wanted or you could have left it without the greenery. But I just like the way the greenery popped out on this white. 
So we're just about finished up and I can show you how this turned out. There it is. It is so cute. You guys, let me know what you think. These signs from Dollar Tree, they're like little boxes. And I am going to create one large sign using these. And I wanted mine to be staggered to look like four pieces of staggered wood. So once I get it lined up the way I want it, I attach all four pieces together using hot glue. And then I'm going to flip that over and squeeze the inside because it has like these side pieces just to make sure it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to give that one coat of paint in my truffle Waverly chalk paint. And then I found this letter at Walmart. I've had it for a while, so I honestly cannot remember how much I paid for it. It was, I'm sure, less than $2. But this is the first letter of our last name. So I wanted to use this letter. So, of course, you could use any letter that you want. And I gave this two coats of paint in the Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral. And then once this has completely dried, as well as the sign with the truffle colored paint has dried, I'm gonna put these two together. So I just set it on top of the um, sign to see exactly where I wanna put it and line that up. And then I'm just gonna lift the letter up to the side so I can make sure I put it back exactly where I wanted it. And I'm gonna secure that down with some hot glue. To create a hanger for the sign, I'm using this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and it has a grayish tint to it so it matches my mineral chalk paint very well. And I just flip that over till it creates like a loop at the top. And then I'm going to turn my sign over and turn my ribbon over and then attach that to the two outside pieces of the sign. And then also at the top part so it'll hang nice and flush when I hang it up on the wall. holder from the Dollar Tree and I picked this up because I really like the shape of it and I'm going to be using some ivory chalk paint made by Waverly and I'm going to begin by just giving this a nice good even coat all the way around the glass candle holder which is going to become the base of our acorn and I'm going to set that to the side and let it dry completely and it does take two coats of paint to get some good coverage on there. The top, you guys, I'm going to be using this bikini top from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to take that out and remove the rope from it and set the other one to the side. And I'm also going to be using one of the wood stems out of the little wood stem packs that you pick up at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to peel that down and sand it, kind of making it as smooth as I possibly can. And I'm going to secure that to the top of the what's going to become our lid with E6000 and hot glue. And I chose to use the E6000 because if you decide to pick up the lid, it will be nice and secure by that stem. And then I am going to run a bead of glue around that just to secure it. So once the glue has dried, this, I love the texture. I really like the way the texture is, is um, standing out. It gives it a more realistic look. So I am going to be using some fast dry premium spackling to fill in those holes because I want it to have a nice finished look. And I just push that down inside the holes and then I'm going to sort of gently smear it around because I don't want to wipe it off and then it come out of the holes. Um, so I just smear that around and I'm going to set that to the side and let it dry. So now that my canister has two good coats of paint with the ivory, I'm going to be using some acrylic warm buff as well as some truffle chalk paint made by Waverly. And I'm going to begin by just taking my fan brush, dipping it into my warm buff paint, and then wiping a little bit of the excess off and going all the way around, giving it a little bit more dimension. And I'm just trying to make this look a little bit more realistic. So once I get that to the desired color I want, I do set it to the side and let it dry completely. And then I give the lid one good coat 
of the truffle chalk paint and it only takes one coat it gives it really good coverage because it's that nice dark brown and then now that this has dried i do take my truffle chalk paint and just sporadically draw lines around just no rhyme or reason just here or there wherever i decide to put them and then once i get all the lines on there that i want i do take my dry brush and go over those lines just trying to blend them in a little bit and then I also take the dry brush and use some of the Waverly as well as the Warm Buff, just going around it trying to blend everything in. Then I decided to take the fan brush, and you will see me struggling here a little bit because the brush was still wet from where I cleaned it earlier. And I'm just trying to um, blend this in to give it a more realistic look. And once I finally get that fan brush dried off a little bit, I just go back and forth with the ivory and the warm buff until I get it to the desired look. And it is turning out so cute. I really like how this one is turning out. So then I took some leaves off of a pick that I already had, and I began by painting it in the warm buff, but these leaves soak that acrylic paint up so much that you could still see the greenery. So I went back over it with some chalk paint and let that completely dry. Then I go back over it with some of the warm buff and it turns out very nicely. That chalk paint really served as a really good primer for these leaves. So then I'm just gonna clip the end of my little leaves off so that it's all the same color there. So I just, I just kept that little piece on there so I could paint it. And then I'm going to take some hemp rope and create a messy bow, and I'm going to glue this as well as the leaves to the stem. And I originally put the leaves on the side and the bow in the front, but then I do take my bow off and then put it more towards where the leaves are because I really like the way they look together. And I'm going to secure that down with some hot glue. <clears throat> Now, if you're going to be using this canister a lot, I do recommend that you use a clear glaze or some sort of protectant on the outside of the glass just to keep the paint from chipping or wearing off. And this is how she turned out. So cute. I really, really do like how this one turned out. I picked this up at the beginning of the summer. It's just a plastic tray and I gave it two coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white trying to make sure that it was even all the way across and if it is a little bumpy once it dries you can take some sandpaper and sand that down nice and smooth because I'm going to be transferring some lettering onto the tray. So I created this this will be a free printable on my website which i will have linked in the description box below if you're interested in going over there and getting this free printable it is an eight and a half by 11 regular copy sheet paper and i'm just going to use the pencil on the back to transfer this over if you don't have this tray you could use this to create on any kind of sign now i use painter's tape and I did not push it very, very hard because I don't want to tear my paint, but I do use the painter's tape to hold it in place so that when I am tracing around the letters, the paper doesn't move. Now, I don't know if I didn't put enough pencil on the back of my paper or if I wasn't pressing hard enough, but when I pull my paper up, it is barely visible. It is visible and I can see the letters, but it's barely visible. And I do have to hold it up and move it around a lot with the light so that I can see all the letters. So you may wanna make sure you put enough pencil markings on the back or use maybe some carbon paper or make sure you press really firmly when you're tracing those letters out. So as you can see here, it is barely visible, but it is visible. And I used my black oil-based Sharpie. This is a fine tip Sharpie and go around each letter. And I like to go around and do all the outlines and then go back in and fill it in. And like I said, you'll see me moving this around a lot because it was very difficult for me to see it. But once I get all of those outlined and filled in, I do let that completely dry. And you could leave it 
as is once you're finished with this and it's gorgeous but I wanted to create some handles for the sides and of course my handles are going to be for decorative purposes only I would not pick this up by the handles or put things on it and pick it up with the handles it's just for decorative purposes so I'm using two dowels one is slightly larger than the other these come in an assorted pack from Walmart I cut two of them down four inches long that's the larger dowel and then I cut the smaller dowel I cut four half inch long pieces and I just used my hand miter saw to do that I used my ruler as a guide so that I would know where I wanted to place them so I placed the wood glue at the one inch mark and the three inch mark so they would be evenly spaced and then use hot glue to secure that until the wood glue sets up I hold the first piece on there until that glue sets up really well and then the second piece I recommend once you put it on there to flip it over and make sure that it is lined up and straight on the handle on that dowel and then hold it in place until that glue sets up and then set it to the side and make sure that Gorilla Glue sets up really well before you paint it. So, um, of course, after I cut it, I did make sure I sand any rough edges off. I gave it one coat of my black chalkboard paint, and I've gone ahead and marked where I want the bottom portion of the handle to be in pencil, and I just secured this down with hot glue. Like I said, this is just for decorative purposes. I thought it just gave it a little something extra, and I think it's really cute. I absolutely love this project. It is very beautiful and I hope that you enjoy it too. I hope you love it as much as I do. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. I love that song. I found this canister a little while back and I honestly can't remember if I found it at Dollar Tree or Dollar General. If it was at Dollar General, I did not pay more than a couple of dollars for it. It had the, this twined bow on there, so I went ahead and carefully removed that. It wasn't glued down. I just untied it and set it to the side because I'm going to reuse it. And give it two coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white. And go ahead and get the inside portion rim because you will be able to see that. Now, originally, I was going to give this an enamel wear look. But after the two coats of paint and it completely dried, I fell in love with how it looked with just the white. Um, you could decorate this for any holiday. You can leave it out all year long. I absolutely love how this one turned out. I'm just going to reattach the bow that was originally on there. You guys, I took a poll on Friday to see if you guys wanted to see farmhouse or farmhouse fall decor. And when I started my projects, farmhouse was winning and now farmhouse fall was winning so I threw some fall in there thank you guys so much for participating in that it was really really close it was like 55% 45% 55% fall so I'm gonna put some fall decoratives in here for everybody I'm using these mini orange mums from Dollar Tree two eucalyptus a floral pick with the pine cones and the cattails and then some foxtails that I just clipped off of the bundle and just sporadically place those around and this project is complete you can use it like I said for any holiday you could change the ribbon out change the florals out I absolutely love this I think it's gorgeous and it was nothing more than just paint it's a flower market sign I found this cute little sign at Dollar General for a dollar and I thought oh I had a great idea of a cute little sign I could make to hang up in my dining room I'm going to be using a basket a wire basket from the Dollar Tree as well as this round um, foam floral from the Dollar Tree I am also going to be using a 12 inch wooden dowel that you can pick up in a package from Walmart. These two cute little beads that I already had on hand. Some chain that I already had on hand that I cut down to um, four and a half inches long. And then also these little rings that I made out of some 18 gauge wire. I just formed a circle and see it has a little opening on the inside of the rings. I'm going to be using some black chalk paint. 
my hot glue gun. And I didn't show you here, but I am going to use some double-sided tape as well. And then also a half of a kitchen towel. You could use, you know, any kind of cloth that you want to use. I just had this really um, nice bright white towel on hand. So I just cut that in half and I'm going to be using that as well. And then also two cup hooks, which you can purchase in a package from Walmart. So for my frame, I cut down two pieces of one by three. For the braces, those are 14 and three quarter inches long. And then I cut down six of the one by three. Those are 28 inches long. This is some scrap wood that I had on hand. As you can see, some of it is bowed. I'm also going to be using my orbital sander and my safety glasses. So I begin by sanding the ends, the sides, and the edges of all the boards just to give it that nice smooth finish. Once that is all complete, I'm going to lay it down next to my square, making sure all of the back pieces are flush. And then I'm going to measure how far I want my braces to go down at the top and the bottom. And I chose to go two inches off of the bottom of the frame for both of the braces. So I just measure those outside pieces and make my mark on the two outside pieces for both ends so that my braces will be evenly spaced. Then I pre-drilled each of the holes so that I could screw each board down to the brace. And I do that on both ends. Now you don't have to use wood. You could certainly use a sign from Dollar Tree and some painter's sticks and create the same back, um, the, the same back frame if you wanted to do the project with all Dollar Tree products. I also am using some interior satin white paint and I'm giving it a nice good coat on all of the sides, the edges, and in all the little crevices. Um, and it, it only takes one coat of paint and that covers it very well. So once I let that completely dry, I now take my dowel and measure where exactly I want my cup hooks to go. So I'm just going to measure off of the end brace at the top. And then I'm also going to measure it from the side and the top to make sure that each of the cup hooks are in the same location so it will the little dowel will hang evenly and then i'm also going to mark where i want my screws to go so that i can hang my basket on there so i just take my pen and figure out which little holes i want my screws for my little basket to hook on and i wanted it flush with that bottom brace so i just pre-drill my holes for my cup hooks and for those screws and then i'm going to put the screws in but i'm not going to push them all the way down because i want to be able to hang my little basket on there and then once i get my basket on there i can then take my screwdriver and secure it tighter when i hang the basket on there i realize that the bottom piece really just kind of um, drooped down more than i wanted it to so i took a jenga block and i painted it white and then I'm just going to place it on that brace there so that when I put the basket on there, it doesn't droop down as far. It sits a little more flush like I want it to. And I secure that down with some wood glue. Now I took some sawtooth hangers off of an old pitcher that I don't use anymore. And I secure those to the back at the top of the frame. And now I'm going to begin painting my dowel. First, I take my beads and I put a generous amount of hot glue on each end and secure my beads. You could use the wooden beads. I don't have any, but I really like the way those are turning out. And then I paint my cup hooks and all the rings with the black chalk paint because I want it to have a nice cohesive same color and look very well together. So once um, I get all of those painted, I'm also going to paint the beads and the entire dowel black. And I just think this turned out so cute. It looks like a little curtain rod. Of course, like I said, you could use the wooden beads or any beads that, that you wanted to use. Then I remove the little top hanging piece and I'm gonna paint the back of the sign with the same chalk paint because I knew the little sign was gonna be hanging and I didn't want anyone to be able to see the cardboard on the back. And then I just take my black Sharpie and go around the edge to cover up the cardboard on the sides as well. 
and this is just turning out so cute. So then I take my um, rings and I put the chain on one end and then I'm going to hook that ring into the sign and you're also going to want to put another ring on the other end of the same chain so that you can hook that on your dowel and you do that for both sides so you'll have the rings on both ends of the chain on both sides. Then I took my basket and I wanted the prettier side of the towel to be seen from the inside of the basket. So I'm just going to take that little hemmed edge and I'm going to clip that down around the basket and I'm going to do that all the way around the around the basket until I get the towel exactly where I want it positioned. And then I am going to take my double sided tape and put that under the little hem and secure it around the rim all the way around except for a smaller portion in the back I do not use the tape on because I want to be able to tighten the screw up once I hang that basket on the sign so it just put it on the back side and then just leave a little opening so you'll be able to tighten those screws down I cut the foam floral down so that it will fit in the basket um, without pushing the little wires out. And I'm gonna decorate it with these pretty little pink carnations, some boxwoods, and some baby's breath. I got the carnations and the baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. And I am gonna cut the little stems off and then push those down into the styrofoam and then place the styrofoam in the basket. And I think this turned out so cute. You could change the flowers out for any season. So the white frame and the black just look so good together. You could decorate it with fall flowers or Christmas decor. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Glass cup that comes from Dollar Tree in a pack of four, and I'm just gonna be using one of those as the base. A pizza pan from Dollar Tree, a pizza pan from Dollar General, now this one was $4, and then the pie pan from Dollar Tree. And then I'm also gonna be using two of these candlesticks. One is longer than the other, and they came from Dollar Tree as well. I'm also going to be using some E6000 hot glue, some rubbing alcohol, some Rust-Oleum semi-gloss white paint, and Krylon Fusion all-in-one satin black. So I'm going to begin by cleaning my glassware with the rubbing alcohol and making sure that that dries before I begin painting it. And I did also clean my pans with the rubbing alcohol, but you really have to make sure that completely dries as well before you paint it. So I'm just going to give it one good coat of the satin black and this is how it looks when it has been completely painted and I'm going to set that to the side and allow it to completely dry. Then I'm going to give my pans, I actually give them two coats, two light coats. So I'll put one light coat on and then I'll put the um, second light coat on after that has dried to the touch and then I'm going to let that set and completely dry before I flip those over. So once I get the two coats on the way that I like it to make sure it has good coverage, this is how it looks. And then let that completely dry before you turn it over and paint the back side. So just flip those over and again, two light coats to get good even coverage. And this is how it looks once those have been painted and dried. Now let those completely dry and then I'm going to use some triple thick um, crystal clear glaze that's made by Krylon and I, I've already put it on the pan and I allow that to dry overnight before I assemble the three tier tray together. So this is the large pizza pan um, that I purchased from Dollar General. I'm just going to flip that over so I can put my bowl on the bottom as the base. So. I measured the center of the pan to decide where to put the bowl, but I actually find it better if you just kind of place your bowl on there and then measure out from the sides to make sure you get it nice and centered. So I'm actually going to be putting the bottom of the bowl, I'm going to be gluing that to the bottom of the pan. So I just place that on there, measure all the way around, make sure I have equal distance on all four sides so I can make sure it's centered because I don't want it to wobble or you know be off center so I do measure things twice just to make sure so once I make sure that's in place I take my pencil and I draw around the base at the bottom um, so that when I pick the bowl up and apply the E6000 and the hot glue I know where to place it back at 
So I'm going to put a generous amount of E6000 on there. This is going to give it a nice, strong, permanent hold. And then I'm going to put some hot glue in the little places that I didn't put the E6000, just so that it will hold it in place until that E6000 sets up. So once I set my bowl in place, I do go back and measure it really quickly to make sure it is centered before that hot glue uh, cools off. And then you want to press firmly and make sure the hot glue has dried before you flip that over. So now it is time to assemble the candlestick so that we can place our second tray. So I'm going to put the bottom of the candlestick on top of the large pizza pan. And again, using the same process, measuring it to make sure it's center, taking my pencil and drawing the outside of it. So I'll know where to place it once I put the glue on. So I do um, go ahead and attach this candlestick. This is actually the longer candlestick. Um, I had two, one was longer, one was taller than the other. So this is the taller candlestick. And I'm applying the bottom part of that again to the top part of the pizza pan. And then I'm gonna make sure it's centered and press firmly so that that hot glue cools and it stays in place. Now the second um, tier is going to be the pizza pan from Dollar Tree. And since my candlesticks, the top parts are the same size, they're the same width, I'm just going to use my other candlestick to measure the bottom of the second pizza pan so that I'll know where to place that when I put it on top of the other candlestick. So this I'm just using for measuring purposes. Um, if you don't have the same candlesticks, please make sure you measure that before you glue it down to the large pizza pan. So once I get that in place, I will go ahead and put my E6000 on the top of the candlestick as well as the hot glue and then place the bottom part of the pan down on top of that candlestick. And then for the third um, tray, I do not put the candlestick on there yet. I'm just making my measurements so that I can make sure I have it centered on the top of the second pizza pan. And then I can take the top part of my candlestick and measure the bottom of the pie pan before I attach the candlestick to both pans. So now I'm just gonna flip the pie pan over so that you can see the bottom of it and measure the top part of the candlestick to that pan as well using the same process just measuring the center marking it with a pencil before i put the glue on so you guys if you are enjoying this video please make sure to give me a thumbs up and if you're new here please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos and if you like how this tray turned out, please let me know in the comments down below. I will show you once I get it completely assembled how I decorated it for fall. And please stay tuned to the end of this video because I have a bonus Dollar Tree DIY for you. So now I'm just going to attach my candlestick, the base to the bottom of the, um, excuse me, I put the glue on the bottom of the candlestick and then attach that to the pizza pan and then the same process with the pie pan. Now you do want to make sure that once you assemble this, that you let it set completely overnight before you decorate it. You want that E6000 to set up and be nice and secure so that it doesn't come apart. And this is how I decorated it for fall. Let me know what you think in the comments down below kind of rounded it out and then just made sure it was like the shape I wanted. And I'm also going to be using some of this cork ribbon that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I actually purchased three packs of this. So I'm going to secure the outside of the um, wire wreath form with the ribbon. So just put a little hot glue at the end and then secure that to the actual wire so it does not move. And then once that sets up, I'm going to wrap the outside of the um, wreath form with this ribbon, just overlapping it slightly. So it's about halfway from the previous section of the ribbon, just overlapping that. And I am going to do that around the entire wreath form. And I do use some glue when I get to the rib sections of the pumpkin, but the rest of the part, I just wrap it around and make sure it's nice and tight. And if you run out of ribbon, just secure that end and then begin your next ribbon with the hot glue. 
So right here, I just had to um, secure that with some hot glue and start the next ribbon. And then when I get to the top, I'm actually going to go under, I mean over, and then under and around so I can secure that to the stem. And then I'm gonna hot glue that there and then wrap the ribbon around the stem, just overlapping it just like I did the outside. And then secure the end with hot glue. And then I'm gonna repeat this process on all of the ribs. Now the stem, there is a little hole at the top and I left that there on purpose and I will show you why in just a moment. But this is how it looks once it's completely covered in the ribbon and I have one, a little bit less than one of the packages of cork ribbon left. Now I'm gonna use some of this floral wire that you can also get at the Dollar Tree, my wire cutters, and then the florals that I'm going to be putting in this pumpkin, I'm going to be using two of each. So it is two of the cattails, two of these gorgeous orange sunflowers. I just love that color, so fall. And two of the fall bouquets that have little brown cattails and two little pine cones and a cotton ball. So I'm going to begin fluffing the um, cattails out a little bit. And then I'm going to actually, you see me put it in the second rib, but I do take that out and I put it in the bottom rib of the pumpkin. So it's in the bottom section there. And then I'm going to take the orange sunflowers and go into the second rib of the pumpkin, pushing those down slightly lower than the cattails. So the cattails stick out a little further. And then the fall bouquet, I will put in the third rib of the pumpkin, repeating the same process there, pushing it down a little bit further than the orange sunflowers. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side, put in the cattails, the sunflowers, and then the fall bouquet right there in that third rib. Then I'm gonna secure these together with the floral wire, and then also secure it to the top part of that stem. So it's actually attached to each other, as well as the stem at the top through that little hole. Now, because these are stacked shorter than the others, there's gonna be some end pieces on each side that I will go back and secure with the floral wire so they hold together very nicely. And just make sure you get that nice and tight. And then as I fluff it out, I do see some end pieces that pop up, so I make sure I secure those as well with the floral wire. So now it is time to make the bow. And all of this ribbon I purchased at the Dollar Tree, this gorgeous orange, and that matches the sunflower so nicely. And then this green, which also matches the greenery and the florals very nicely as well. And then for some color, these beautiful leaves and acorn ribbon. And all of these are nine foot, they're all wired edged. And then my absolute favorite is this beautiful red truck with the pumpkins. That is so cute. So to begin making the bow, I did not measure this out. I just kind of eyeballed it, but I fold it over like a little loop and then make the bottom loop about the same size as the top, holding it in the center. I go over that right hand side, making a loop and then bring that up to the center. So that's gonna be how I make all of these bows. So the orange one, I wanted it to be on the bottom, so it's gonna be a lot larger than the rest. And again, I just eyeballed this just to make sure that I had the right size between the florals to cover up all those stems. And I'm just gonna loop that over, loop the bottom, loop it around the right side, and then bring that back up to the center. And so the orange is gonna be on the bottom, and then I'm going to use the same process to make the bow with the leaves and the acorns because I wanted to place that between the orange and the green bows. So once I get that together, I am going to put the leaves, the ribbon leaves, on top of the orange and then put that green on top squeeze it very tightly in the center, fluff out my bow a little bit, make sure they're even on each side, and I'm gonna secure that with a Chanel stem, making sure it is very tight and secure. And then I'm gonna take that and attach it to the wreath, and I'm going to feed the Chanel stem through that hole at the top where the pumpkin stem is, 
and the other side through the bottom of where the florals are together. And then I'm gonna make sure that's nice and tight, twisting it. And then once that is nice and tight, I do cut the excess Chanel stem off. And to cover that Chanel stem and to give it a finished look, I take some of the green ribbon, fold it into thirds, and then I do feed it through the stem of the pumpkin, and I secure that down with some hot glue. And that just gives it a nice finished look to that bow. So now to use the pretty little truck ribbon, I am gonna feed that through the center of the pumpkin wreath form. And what I did was I left the two ribs, like left the ribbon on the top of the two ribs so you could actually see the truck and the pumpkins. And then I'm gonna feed it through each side just going under, over, under, over. So it's actually under on the outside edges of the wreath form. And then I just pull that down to the center, kind of even it up, and then I'm going to secure that with some hot glue on the back side of the wreath form to the actual ribbon on both sides. And this is how it turned out. I just think this is so cute and so fall. I really like how this one turned out. calendar that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I actually picked out one of the, um, it was actually November, and then I'm going to be using this sign that also came from the Dollar Tree back in the summer and I'm just going to trace that out and cut this out and I just love this saying, begin each day with a grateful heart and we really should begin each day with a grateful heart. And I'm going to secure that to the sign with Mod Podge and then just push all the little creases out, set that to the side and let it completely dry before you put it onto your wreath form. So I'm gonna be using one of the round wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree, some of the same green floral wire, and then please ignore the eucalyptus. I decided not to use that, it was a little dull, so I'm not using the eucalyptus, but I'm gonna be using actually three of those fall bouquets two of the burlap sunflowers, two of the fall berries, and then two of these foxtails. So I'm gonna begin by putting the foxtails opposite each other, lining those up, and then I'm gonna take the berries, put them slightly lower than the foxtails opposite each other, and then I do have to cut those fall bouquets down so the stems don't stick out the opposite side of each other. These are so cute with the little cotton ball and the pine cones and the cattails. And then once I cut those down to size, I'm gonna put those opposite each other in the floral bouquet, and then I'm going to secure that with my floral wire. So once I get those lined up in the center, I'll secure that really tightly with the floral wire. So I wrap that quite a few times, making sure that it is nice and secure. So I'm just lining this up, making sure everything's even, and then securing that. And once I wrap that around the little excess, once I twist that, I just tuck that down into the stems of the floral bouquet. And then once I get that nice and secure, I'm, I'm going to bend it trying to get it to the shape of the side of the wreath form. So here I'm just going to bend that around, trying to make sure that I can kind of get it to the size of that one side of the wreath form. Then I'm going to take this burlap ribbon that also came from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to feed it through the wire form and use my hot glue to secure that to the actual wire so it doesn't come apart. So just put that on the wire and then put it on the edge, fold that over and secure it down. And now I'm going to wrap these, just one half of the wreath form with this burlap ribbon, just slightly going over, kind of overlapping each section about halfway. So I'll just go around there wrapping it and about halfway of the original wrap. And then I'm gonna complete that process around half of this wreath form. And I do have a little excess left over and I'll show you what I do with that, but it does take this whole roll of ribbon for this project. So once I get to the end, I'm gonna secure that again with the hot glue to the wreath form and to the other part of the ribbon there. 
and then the excess I'm going to repeat that process on the opposite side like that one little center section opposite but I just start that off with um, wrapping it but before I completely wrap it I am going to put my florals in there so just have that first section secured then put my florals on top and then I'm going to wrap that center section of those florals with this burlap ribbon and that's going to cover up those stems but it's also going to give me a place to put some more flowers so once I get that on there I secure that again with some hot glue and then I fluff out my flowers, make sure they're nice and pretty where I want them, make sure my sign fits in there, and then I put a generous amount of hot glue on the back of this, making sure that it will be nice and secure on top of that burlap ribbon. And I just set it in place and let that set up. Now these burlap sunflowers, I just pull those off of the stems and then I cut the bottom pieces flush so that I can hot glue these to the burlap that I put between the florals. So that burlap served two purposes. It covered up the stems but also gave me a place to put these beautiful little sunflowers. So on the second bouquet of sunflowers I pull one of those off and put it in the center at the top just to cover up that hole from the calendar and then I'm going to take two of the pine cones off of one of those other floral bouquets and secure those one on each side of the sunflower just to give it a nice little decorative touch. Then I'm going to take the three remaining burlap sunflowers and hot glue those to the side of the burlap ribbon so it gives it a nice finished look. And that is how it turned out. It is so pretty. You guys, if you have a favorite, please let me know. So for project number one, I'm using this plastic little bucket. It has a lot of beautiful little details. This came from Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to be using my white Waverly chalk paint. And I'm going to give that two good coats on the inside and outside of the bucket, including the bottom as well. So once that has completely dried, I am going to take my black chalkboard paint and give this a cute little enamel wear look. I apologize in advance, you guys. I have a bit of a cold, so I do sound a little stuffy. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Um, now I'm just going to take the black chalkboard paint and paint the top rim as well as the top portions of the handles on this little um, bucket. And it has, like I said, a lot of beautiful little details on here. So the under the little handles, it has like a little rectangular piece that makes it look like the little handles are attached to the bucket. And I go ahead and paint those black as well as the top portion of the little handles there. I do leave the handle themselves silver because I like the way that looks. And this is how it looks once it has completely dried. And I'll give you a little bit more of a close-up look of those little detail pieces there under the handle. So cute. And I did get a little bit of white paint on the little silver portion. So I just scrape that off with my fingernail and wipe it down really good. And it just comes right off. So now that everything's completely dried, I'm going to put one of these little peel and stick stickers that you can pick up at Dollar Tree and I chose the word thankful. I went ahead and cut that out and I'm just going to peel that off and place it in the center front portion of the bucket and just push that down nice and flat. I wanted to go ahead and protect all my paint because I'm going to be de decorating this with some florals and I didn't want to scratch my chalk paint. So I do go ahead and use my matte Mod Podge and go on the entire outside as well as the inside of this little bucket. And I do make sure that that completely dries. So while it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint two of these cute little pumpkins from Dollar Tree in my Waverly chalk paint, paint in the color Celery. I am a little bit obsessed with this color right now. I absolutely love this celery color. 
So I'm going to give those two good coats of paint and allow those to completely dry. And of course, since I pulled the little florals off the top, I need to make little stems. So I'm going to use two of these little wooden pit, uh, wooden stems from Dollar Tree. And they were a little bit taller on these size pumpkins than I wanted. So I took my box cutter and just cut the top portion of the little pumpkin out until I got it to the desired depth where I could push the little stem down and thought that, you know, that the little stem would look appropriate for this size pumpkin. So I do go ahead and take that out and push it down to make sure it's the right size before I take my hot glue and secure the little stem down. You don't have to put the hot glue in there, but I did just because I don't want them to fall out um, of the little pumpkin. So I do that for both of those. And now it is time to decorate this cute little bucket now that everything has dried. So I use um, some of the Dollar Tree's floral foam, styrofoam, and I just put it in there. I didn't hot glue it because I want to be able to use this bucket all year long. And I didn't want to just use it just for flowers. Um, but I'm just going to set those little styrofoam pieces in there and I'm going to use some of these burlap sunflowers and these little foxtails. Both of these came from Dollar Tree. And I just cut those off of the bundles and just placed them where I thought that they would look really nice. So I used one bundle of the foxtails and two of the little bundles of the burlap sunflowers. And I'm also going to be using two of these little orange pumpkins from Dollar Tree. And I loved the color of those, but I did not like the plastic stems. So I took some hemp rope and just hot glued that around those little plastic stems to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. I'm also going to be using two of these little fall picks from Dollar Tree as well. It has these cute little pine cones, berries, and pumpkins on there. And I'm just going to place one on each side. So I wanted my pumpkins to stand up really nicely so you could see those. So I do put an extra little piece of styrofoam in there. And of course, I wanted my little celery colored pumpkin to be the little showcase piece. And I wanted it to stand up a lot taller. So I do use um, a piece of a wooden insert from a previous DIY. I used the outer portion of that little box. It came from Dollar Tree. This is just the inner portion. And I'm going to set that on my styrofoam inside the bucket so that little pumpkin can sit up nice and pretty. And then um, I'm also using two of my little white pumpkins that I did in a previous DIY because I liked the way these colors look together. And once I kind of position them and kind of get an idea of how I want everything to lay out, I'm going to take all my little pumpkins out and I'm going to take some raffia and push that down in there and it's going to keep those little styrofoam pieces from moving around but it's also going to cover them up and give it a nice little finished look and a nice little fall look and then I'll place my little pumpkins back in there and I will show you in just a moment how lovely this little project turned out. It is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this project. It is so cute. I really love it and I hope you did too. And I love the fact that you can use this bucket all year long and you don't have to use it as just a centerpiece or a floral arrangement. A sign from the Dollar Tree. I've gone ahead and taken some sandpaper and tried to remove most if not all of the glitter from the top part of the sign that said autumn. And I'm going to use my painter's tape and tape around all the little ribbon pieces because I don't want to get paint on those. And I do like the color of the little ribbon. It's like a little burlap color. And once I get all that little tape pieces in there, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and give it two coats of paint on the um, entire part of the sign, including the outside edges, because once you hang this up, you will be able to see those. And I do get in between all the little sections as well. That's why I went ahead and covered up those little burlap ribbon pieces. So now that that has dried, and you can see that I've got all the little inside edges, I'm gonna use another section of the same calendar, and I chose to use the October month with this beautiful colored pumpkin and these little birds. 
and I'm just going to line that up on top of my sign. Try to make sure that the sign is very straight. And you don't want to push your tape down too, too much because you don't want to rip your um, picture when you remove the tape. Because you're going to have to tape it down and pull it back up a lot. Um, and you don't want to destroy your picture. So I just lined it up where I wanted it. And I'm only tracing the top section of the picture out. Because once I cut that down, I want everything to line up really pretty on this sign in little sections. So I just, um, you know, lightly secured that with the tape, flipped it over, traced it around, cut it out. And then I'm going to lay that down so that I can line the next section up to make sure like the birds and the little flowers and the pumpkins line up together and push it up to the little edge of that next section. And then I will repeat that process by putting a little bit of tape on there to secure it so that I can flip it over and trace that section out and then remove it and cut it down. And I'm gonna do that all the way down until I don't have any more of the little calendar picture left. So obviously it's not gonna cover up the entire sign, which I'm okay with because I like the shape of the top and the bottom part of this little sign. And I am going to give it some paint to make it blend in a little bit better, the top part and the bottom part of the sun. So I did use the chalk paint for two purposes. For one, I went ahead and painted behind all the little pictures so that you would see what the sign previously had on there because the little calendar picture is a little thin and you don't want to be able to see through it and see what was already on there. And also, I used it as a primer for the top portions so that when I paint it with my acrylic paint, um, it will blend in really nicely. So once I get all those cut out and everything is nice and straight the way I want it, I am going to use my Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the color Warm Buff. And I'm going to give that two good coats at the top part of the side as well as the portion at the bottom that the little calendar doesn't cover up. And you'll have to let me know in the comments down below, would you have left it white or do you like the warm buff color better? I thought that this would give it um, a nice little finished look because this little warm buff is similar to the color in the stem of the pumpkin on the picture. So now that it is all dried, I've removed my little tape pieces from the ribbon. It is time to Mod Podge, and I'm going to use my Mod Podge in matte um, to put the little calendar pieces on there. And I make sure that I have nice little even brush strokes and not like a lot of excess glue in there, but you do want to make sure you have enough that all the little paper um, will stay on there. And I'll just take my hand and push any little wrinkles out that may be on there. And then I do go ahead and take my Mod Podge and go over top of it just to protect that picture. And then if you need to take any excess off, you could take the excess off. And this is how she turned out once it's completely dry. Absolutely love this little sign. So I'm going to begin by using E6000 and hot glue and two boxes of the Tumbling Tower Game that you can purchase from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take two of those wood pieces and put a little bit of E6000 on the side piece in the middle and hot glue on each side of that. And then I'm going to press firmly down onto the wooden block on the bottom so it is one full piece on the bottom and then one piece coming up the side making sure that it is flush so it looks like a little l so one full piece on the bottom and then the other piece on the side flush with that and i'm going to do that with um, i'm going to make 23 sets of these so it's going to take 46 pieces so it takes a little bit more than one box and I'm going to set all of those to the side and make sure the glue sets up really nicely so it is nice and secure. Then I'm going to be using this bicycle wheel wreath ring, which is about 14 inches, that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited when I found this. I'm going to flip it over so that the back of the bicycle wheel is going to be facing you and the front's going to be on the table. 
So I'm gonna put the same process, the E6000 and the hot glue, and I'm going to put that on the outside of this wire wreath form and making sure that the solid block is on the bottom on the table and the side piece comes up so that when you flip it over, it is nice and one single piece on the outside. So I take my next piece and just put that flush to the bottom corner of the original piece that I glued down. And I'm gonna repeat this process around the entire wreath form using the E6000 and the hot glue. The E6000 is just gonna give it a more permanent, secure hold and the hot glue just to hold it in place until that E6000 sets up. When I get to the end, the last two, I just, um, and you'll see here that my hot glue gun was not hot enough in the beginning, so the first two I did have to go back. So please make sure you have your glue gun set on high and it's nice and warm before you begin. And the last two pieces I just used, um, just kind of separated it, gave it an even amount. And you'll see, because it's not going to be completely flush on the last two, it's just not enough room to use the, because I actually made 24 and it wasn't enough room to use that last one, so I just evenly spaced those two apart. And this is how it looks on the back side. And so when you flip it over, you have the one flush piece on each, like right there on the end. <clears throat> now I'm gonna be using some wooden dowels that you get at the Crafter Square section in Dollar Tree. These are the perfect size for this. I'm gonna use E6000 and hot glue again to secure these onto the spindles of the wagon wheel. And I originally put it on the wood and then press that down onto the wire, but I do find that it's a little bit easier if you actually put the glue on the wire, the metal form part, and then just push the wood down. I take my finger protector and wipe the excess glue off so there's no drips. And make sure that you put the wooden dowel flush with your tumbling tower blocks. So it's flush at the bottom and it is gonna leave a space at the top, but that's gonna give us um, room to make our little wheelbase. So here you'll see me just adding it to the actual metal part and then putting the wood dowels down. And make sure that you let that glue set really good before you go to the next one so they don't pop off. So now it has created a perfect little circle in the middle, and I am gonna flip that over and put some extra hot glue all the way around the wreath form as well as the spindles, just to give it some extra stability to make sure those dowels and the Jenga blocks don't come off. So once the glue has set, I'm gonna use the circle out of this little puzzle piece game that you pick up at the Dollar Tree, and it is slightly smaller, so I'm gonna take some hemp rope and hot glue that around the little wooden circle, and it does take me two um, times to go around it, so I'm gonna hot glue that on, and then I'm gonna hot glue around it one more time on top of the hemp rope to give it enough space to fit nice and snugly down in between those dowels. And now it's gonna be a perfect fit. And I am just loving how this wagon wheel is turning out. So I take the little centerpiece with some black chalk paint and I paint it on both sides, including the um, hemp rope. And now I'm gonna paint the wagon wheel with Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. And I make sure to get down in between each of those creases and on the back side because when you set this up or hang it up, you'll be able to see those back pieces and I wanna make sure everything was the same color. So now that the chalk paint has dried, I'm gonna secure the little wheelbase down with E6000 and hot glue. So you, once you put your centerpiece in, you could be completely done. It's beautiful just the way it is and you have less than $5 in this. But I want to embellish mine a little bit more and make it a little bit more realistic so I am using some of these um, pearl gems. They're little gemstones. They're little stickers. And I picked these up at Dollar General for a dollar. And I gave them a nice good coat of the black chalk paint. And I thought these would be perfect little nail heads. So I'm gonna place those at the end of each dowel and try to put it about the center of the Jenga block. And these are so cute, it really gives it a little something extra special. And I'm also gonna put them in the center of the wheelbase so they look like little bolts. 
And this is just turning out absolutely adorable. I really am loving how this project's turning out. So once I get these on there <clears throat> and in the center, I'll show you how I decorated it and you can decorate it any way you want to. And all the pieces that I put on here are gonna be pieces that I can take off and change throughout the seasons and the holidays. And those little stickers, they stuck really, really well. I did not even have to use hot glue on those. So now I'm gonna take some of this beautiful orange ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and create a nice fluffy bow. And I'm just gonna create it by um, making like two loops on each side. So I originally was going to make one orange and then the beautiful little red truck with the pumpkins, but it wasn't quite as fluffy as I wanted it. So I do create another orange and I'm going to secure those down with a Chanel stem. And again, it still wasn't as fluffy as I wanted it. So I'm going to create another orange bow to go on top of that. And I just secured that in the middle with a piece of the orange ribbon, just folded it in thirds, wrapped it around and hot glued it. And now I'm just gonna attach it to my bow in the opposite direction so that it is nice and full and fluffy. And I'm gonna put that down with some hot glue. And then I will secure that bow to the wagon wheel with the Chanel stem. So once I get that down and fluff it up nice and pretty and make it nice and round and fluffy, and this is just so cute. You could put Christmas bows. You could put the buffalo check. It's just really beautiful. You know, you could just change this out. I'm um, going to be using the welcome word out of the package of three words that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to secure that down with some floral, floral wire so that um, I can change that out if I want to. Now I'm just showing you how you can create some florals to go around um, the wagon wheel for each of the seasons. So this is two foxtails and two of the um, autumn floral bouquets that I just put together with floral wire and kind of bent it around and then put that in the center of the bow. Now I do opt to take the florals out. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know if you like it with or without the florals. I do take the florals out because I just am loving this wagon wheel and I really didn't want to take away from it. I really wanted to be able to see it. So let me know if you like it with or without the florals. So now I'm just going to secure the word down with my floral wire. I just feed that through the E and the O and just twist that on the back. And I think this is just turning out absolutely adorable. You'll have to let me know. If you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. It really does help support my channel. And now I'm going to show you once I get that secured what it looks like without the florals. And it is just absolutely precious. I really do like this. And I'm going to remove the three signs from the yard stake, and I'm just going to be using those three signs. And to help with the process, I used my hair dryer to loosen up the glue so that I would not damage these pieces too much as I remove them. Because once you assemble this piece together, you will be able to see the back part of these signs. I am also using this nice thick MDF sign from Dollar General for $2. And I'm going to go ahead and again use my hair dryer to loosen that glue up so that I can remove the stickers from the back. Then I'm going to take some 100 grit sandpaper and you can get a package of different grit sandpaper from Dollar Tree. I'm using 100 grit so that I can get in between all the lettering because I had some rough edges and I want it to have a nice smooth finish. And to get all of that excess glitter off of this side, I use my hair dryer again to loosen up that glue so that I can easily sand all of the glitter down so it would be nice and smooth. Then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm going to paint this entire sign except for the front of it. I do take my time and get in between all of the lettering. This is a little bit time consuming, but I thoroughly enjoy painting. I find it to be very relaxing. This only takes one coat and you get really good coverage on there. So this is how it looks once the paint has dried and I tried to make sure that I did not get very much paint on the front of the sign. 
because I'm going to be painting the S, the N, and the W in my Waverly chalk paint in white. I'm not going to paint the snowflake because I'm going to do something a little different with the snowflake. So this does take two coats of the white paint and if you get a little bit of dripping or if it gets on the outside, just wipe the excess off, let that dry, and then you can go back over the spots that the paint got onto with a black marker. I painted all three of the signs with two coats of the Waverly chalk paint in white and I did go ahead and get the front and the back. I think these are going to make the perfect snowman because I love the design at the top and the bottom. I also will be using three of the Tumbling Tower game pieces that you can purchase from Dollar Tree and I give those one coat of paint in the Waverly chalk paint in the color white as well. And this is how these signs look once the two coats have dried. So those have some really good coverage from the chalk paint. So for the snow sign, to cover up the snowflake, I am using a piece of Buffalo Check scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. And I just line it up where I want the design to be on the snowflake. And then I flip the sign over and use my pencil to trace around the snowflake. Trying to make sure that I get in between all of the grooves because there are a lot of little pieces on there. Now you do want to leave some excess on each of the sides where the letter N and the letter W are so that you can create the snowflake design to go over top of that. So I just saved a piece of what I already cut out to hold that over top of those places so that I could trace that out and have the same design on the N and the W. <clears throat> and then once I trace that out, again, I'll just cut that down with my scissors. Then I took my pencil and I wanted the S to stand out more than just blending in with the N. So I just drew the outline of the S and then I will go over where I put my pencil marks with an oil-based black Sharpie. And then I do go ahead and go a little bit down on the N and the W just in case you could see that once I put the scrapbook paper on there. Then to apply the scrapbook paper, I'm going to be using some matte Mod Podge. And I put a nice even coat on top of the sign and then place the paper on there and make sure there's no wrinkles or creases. And then I'll put a nice even coat on top of my scrapbook paper to seal that in. Now I let mine dry for several hours before I get any of the excess paper off. And because there's a lot of grooves and different shapes on the snowflake and there are very small spaces, I am using a fingernail file to get in between all of those grooves. Now I just use my fingernail file going in one direction, try to be careful not to rip or tear any of the scrapbook paper. And I'll go all the way around the snowflake until I get a nice smooth finish. I'm using three of these wooden snowflake stickers from Dollar Tree and I removed the foam sticker portion off of the back and I accidentally broke one. So I thought, well, I'll just glue this back together when I put it together, but it actually worked out in my favor. Everything happens for a reason and I'll show you what I mean in just a little while when I put these snowflakes on there. It was such a blessing that it broke. So I um, painted each one of the snowflakes just on the front and in between all the little grooves with the Waverly white chalk paint. And this only took one coat. And then once I get all of those painted, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to set those to the side to dry. And then I am using some quart paint stir sticks. You can get these from Lowe's in a package of 30 for a dollar. I cut the rounded tip off and then I'm going to hold this up to my sign to see how long I want this piece to be because this is going to be the rim of the hat. So I go ahead and do this for each one of the signs and cut three of the craft sticks down. Then this is completely optional, but I didn't want mine to have such pointy sharp edges. So I took some sandpaper and just rounded those corners off. 
Then I'm going to take the craft sticks and lay them on top of the sign to determine where I want the hat rim to be. And then I'll take my pencil and draw above those craft sticks so that when I get ready to paint, I will know not to paint below those lines. So I'm going to paint the tops of the signs and these craft sticks with my Waverly chalk paint and ink. And I am going to paint the front and the back of these signs because, again, you will be able to see the back of the sign once it's all put together. And I just try to keep the angle the same on the back as what I, as what I have on the front. And um, as you see me taking this off camera, it's because I'm using my hair dryer to dry it so that when I put it back on the table, I don't smear or smudge that paint. And if I use my hair dryer on the table, then the craft sticks will blow away. <laughs> So I'm going to paint the tops of these signs for the hats and then I'm going to paint each one of the craft sticks completely on the front side and then the back side just the two outside edges because you will be able to see parts of that once you apply this to the sign. So I just freehanded the faces on the snowman. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can always print out an image and trace it or transfer it on there. I'm using an ultra fine Sharpie marker and my oil based Sharpie marker. And I'm also going to be using some folk art pure orange acrylic paint for the nose. So I initially went with the ultra fine to go on the outline of all of the um, pieces of their face and then I filled in the eyes with the oil base but I like the thickness of the oil base and I thought that it would make it stand out more so after I paint the nose I do go back over the eyebrows and the mouth with the oil based sharpie just to I just think it gave it more of a pop and then I go, once the paint dries on the nose, I go around the outline of the nose with the fine tip. And then I draw a couple of lines on each one of the noses just to make it more, look like more of a realistic carrot. And then once I'm finished with that, I'm going to attach the rims of the hats with hot glue. And I'm going to do that for all three pieces. And then I'm going to attach the snowflakes to the top of the hat. And this is how the snowflake breaking worked in my favor because the smaller snowman's top of his hat would not have held the full snowflake. It would have stood off the top of the hat, so it worked out absolutely perfect. Then I'm going to take the three tumbling tower pieces and I am going to glue these to the back of the snow sign. And I just make sure that I line it up so that you won't be able to see the tumbling tower pieces from the front of the sign. So as I'm holding it up, I'm just determining where I want each of the snowmen to be and making sure that you can't see those tower pieces from the front. Now I go ahead and hold the snowman up because the bottom edges are not straight and then I hold the sign up so I can make sure that as I'm putting them together they're straight and that it will be able to stand freely. I go ahead and attach the two outside snowmen first so that when I get ready to put the one in the center I can leave an equal amount of space on each side of the snowman so it would look a little bit more cohesive. <clears throat> and I absolutely love how this project turned out. I think this is so cute, so adorable. I really enjoyed making it and I hope you enjoy it too. Let me know in the comments using some of these dowels from this assorted wooden dowel piece from Walmart. And I picked out five of the same size dowels and laid those out until I had the desired shape for my star. And then I'm just gonna hold that middle piece down and mark it with my pencil so that I will know where to put my glue after I glue these two outside dowels together. So I'm just gonna overlap one on top of the other and just glue that down. And then I can glue that piece straight across. And then to attach the other two pieces, I will just put a dot of glue on each end of the dowels and then cross those over. Once I get those in place, I'm going to be wrapping each end of the star where the dowels meet with some hemp rope, or you could use jute rope or jute cord or whatever you have on hand. And I'm just going to hot glue that down on the back side of the star and then wrap that around until I get to the end.
And once I get to the end, I will just tuck that string cording down on top of itself and kind of squeeze it together. I'm going to do that for all five points of the star. And I'm also going to do that where all of the dowels meet each other, where they connect. Once I have all of those wrapped up and the glue has set, I took my hair dryer and went over the entire piece to get any loose glue strands that were just hanging off of there. This just kind of made them go away so I would have a nice finished look to be able to paint it. I again used some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I painted the entire piece front and back including the hemp cord. In order to be able to attach some florals in the middle of the star, I am using some white burlap ribbon, and I'm just going to glue that into the center portion of the star and just wrap that around and hot glue it to itself. And I'll, it will take two small strands of the burlap ribbon. Once I get that in place, I'm gonna decorate it with some of these white fern bouquet from Dollar Tree and I've already used a couple of the branches on there or the leaves. I just cut the leaves off and since I'd already used some of them I only had four of the full size leaves and then a couple of the smaller ones. So I put the full size leaves on the top three parts of the star and then at the bottom I used those smaller branches and I just secured all of that in place with some hot glue. Once all of those are in place, I'm going to use some pieces from the Holly Bouquet from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to place the greenery on the outside parts of the star, and then I'll go in and add some red berries wherever I think they look nice, and then I'll also add some pine cones. Now, the Holly Bouquet only came with three pine cones, so I did have to use an extra pine cone in my stash so that I would have four pine cones on there. And then I'll add a couple of more berries. And I think this project is so beautiful. I love the way the red and the green and then the brown and the pine cones just really pops off of this white star. Wood that I had in a pile in my shop. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down to 25 inches long and 16 inches high. And then I'm going to take my orbital sander and sand down all those rough edges to make it nice and smooth. Now I know that not everyone has access to wood or they don't feel comfortable with power tools. So you could certainly use some foam board for this project if you are not comfortable with power tools or if you just don't have any scrap wood. Um, I debated on whether or not I wanted to stain it or paint it, but this has been sitting out of my shop for a while, so it was kind of discolored. So I decided to go ahead and paint this with my Krylon Chalky Finished Paint, and I will leave a link to that in my description box below if you are interested. And I painted the outside edges and gave the front of the sign two coats, of course, allowing it to dry in between. And then I wanted to distress it some more, so I'm going to use my Deco Art Chalky Paint. This is gray color, and I will have a link to that in my description box below if you are interested as well. And then a nice stiff bristled type of brush, and then I'm going to heavily distress that. I'm pretty much emphasizing on where the wood grain is, those little knots that were on there. And then I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to be using um, one of the wall stickers from Walmart for $2.98. You guys, I was so excited when I saw this. So I picked this up and then I'm just going to lay it out on my side to decide where I want to put it. And I want mine to stay on there permanently. I don't want it to come back off. So I'm going to use some Mod Podge to put that down. So I found it easier to just lay the truck out where I wanted it and then I'll fold each side up and apply my Mod Podge underneath. So this is me just trying to make sure that it's straight and it's not crooked and wonky. And then of course it has all these creases where it was packaged. So I tried to use my Cricut um, scraper and then I thought I was going to ruin the sticker so I just found it was easier to use my hand and then put 
extra Mod Podge where those pieces were folded. So if you know a better method, let me know in the comments down below because I just put a lot of extra Mod Podge on there trying to make sure I could get those creases out. And then it comes with this cute truck, a truck, that's the second time I've said that. It came with this cute tree to put in the back of the truck. And then I'm going to put peace and joy at the top of the sign and to seal everything in and also to make them look less like stickers and more like it was drawn on there or painted on there. I'm going to go over each of these pieces with my matte Mod Podge so that takes some of that gloss out using the matte Mod Podge and you guys I absolutely love this sign it came out way better than I thought it would it is so beautiful I'll show you in just a minute how it looks with all of that Mod Podge dried this is so gorgeous thank you for watching please take care and I will see you guys next time